Outside of bringing Sinks into Twitter and charging eight bucks for a check mark, Elon Musk and the team at Tesla have been packing in some amazing technology into the Tesla vehicles, namely using machine learning. I'm gonna try to build some of my own in this tutorial so you'll be able to take a road sign and use object detection to detect it. What's happening guys? Welcome to another episode of Code That where I try to build a ridiculous amount of stuff in a ridiculously short time frame. In today's episode, we are going to be building our very own roadside detection model. Reasonably quickly, we're gonna power through this one. Anyway, we are going to be using the YOLO V5 model, OpenCV and PyTorch to be able to detect different road signs on a road using Python. This has quite a varied amount of use cases. If you wanted to go and deploy this inside of a vehicle, you'd be able to detect where there are particular stop signs and potentially use control flow and logic to be able to drive your car from there. Obviously, you'd need a slightly more sophisticated model to actually put this on the road and get it driving. Although that's got me thinking, maybe next code that episode? Let me know in the comments below. But as per usual, we've got a couple of rules when it comes to code that. First and foremost, I'm not gonna be able to take a look at any pre-existing code, use Stack Overflow or leverage GitHub Copilot, apart from the pre-processing code, because I'll talk about that a little bit in a second. If I do, it is a one minute time penalty. Second, that brings us to the time limit. I'm gonna have 15 minutes to do this, and if I don't make it, what's the penalty? It's gonna be a $50 Amazon gift card to you guys. Ready to do it? Let's get to it. Alrighty guys, 15 minutes on the clock. I'm gonna keep talking to a minimum. Let's go. Okay, so just a quick note on the data that we're going to be using. We are going to be using the roadside detection data set that comes from Kaggle. And I've also got a pre-processing function, which is originally from the YOLO V5 repository that I've tweaked a little bit. All right, let's go do this. So I'm gonna create a new Jupyter notebook and I'm gonna shut up. Thanks, Coda Nick. It's about time you stopped talking. So welcome on back to another episode of Code That. I'm your host, VoiceOver Nick. In today's episode, we are going to be taking a look at how to build our very own roadside detection model. So first things first, we need to go on ahead and install all the dependencies in order to grab our data set from Kaggle. So here you'll see me installing the Kaggle Python module. We'll then make a directory and upload our Kaggle API key. And then last but not least, we'll be downloading a data set from the Andrew MVD roadside detection data set on Kaggle. Radio, so it looks like that is our data set now downloaded. The next thing that we're going to do, given the extent of my OCD, is that we're going to rename our Jupyter Notebook and then uh, add a couple of markdown cells, as you do. Can we also just take a moment to appreciate the intensity on Codenix's face right now? Look at that concentration. Absolutely zoned in, I tell you. As I'm all about that YOLO life, but... The problem that we've got is our data set is currently in a Pascal VOC format. This is just another file format that can be used for bounding box detection, aka object detection. Now, I've gone ahead and prepared a nice little Python function that's going to allow us to convert those Pascal VOC annotations into a YOLO format, and you can see me running it right now. Now that that's done, what we're gonna go on ahead and do is install the YOLO v5 package from GitHub. This one's pretty straightforward. Just git clone it down and pip install requirements.txt.
And this is about the point where I completely forget everything else that I have to do up to this point. But uh, maybe, just maybe, I'll work it out. Stay tuned to find out more. Wow, that's, uh, that's I've gone full YouTuber now, guys. Yeah, nah, still haven't worked it out. So right about now, if I actually went and paid attention to the code that I was writing, I'd realize that I'm now CDing into the YOLO v5 folder and then writing the command to copy from that YOLO v5 folder. But anyway, just I'm, I'm writing wrong code. He shoots, he scores. Oh my God, I worked it out. Look at the silent satisfaction in my face. I got it. I got it, guys. In order to go on ahead and train our road sign detection model, we need to go and configure our YOLO v5 config. This is represented as a YAML file format, standing for yet another markup language. So what you can see me doing here is updating the different classes that we're going to have. So we're going to have a stop sign, a traffic sign. I believe we're also going to have a pedestrian crossing as well as a speed limit detection capability. Yeah, you better check that time limit code, Nick. You're running out. And it's about time you pass the code that challenge for once. Psst, come here. Want to know a secret? Are you looking for your next dream job in data science, machine learning, deep learning, or just data in general? Well, you need to join Jobs from Nick. Each and every week, I'll send you a curated list of the best jobs in data. These are jobs with great perks, great people, and great roles. Plus, you'll get access to exclusive content like AMAs, interviews, and resume reviews. So why not join? Plus, it's completely free. Link is in the description below. What are you waiting for? All right, back to the video. All right, we need some intense music. We're about to train this model. This is where it could all go horribly wrong. Yeah, I'd be praying to right about now, but oh, that is a good sign. Guys, it's happening. It's happening. And training's kicked off. You can see there that it says starting training for 50 epochs. We are in business. Alrighty guys, so we've successfully started training, so I'm gonna pause it there. We'll be back as soon as the model's finished training and then we're gonna actually put it to the test. But in the meantime, we're gonna keep praying just in case.
as you can tell, uh, Coda Nick likes that green screen, maybe just a little bit too much. Alrighty guys, so the model has finished training and we've got a mean average precision at 50% of 99.3 for the stop walk or 0.9, 0 0.97, 0 97.7%. Let's finish this off and actually make some detections, shall we? where it all comes to fruition. Everything that we've been working for over the last seven minutes and 47 seconds, it happens now. We're gonna go on ahead and import some dependencies, namely PyTorch, Matplotlib, NumPy, CV2, OS, and Ida tools, and we'll be able to visualize our detections within our Jupyter Notebook. I'll leave it to Code Nick from here. Catch ya.
Guys, we did it. 251 made that time limit. Take a look. So these are the results of our detections. So you can see it's detecting the speed limit. It's detecting a crosswalk sign. We've detected traffic lights. And if we go and run this cell of code again, take a look, we'll get new detections. Take a look at that. Traffic lights, speed limit, speed limit, speed limit, crosswalk. Pretty cool, right? Stop. All of that under 15 minutes not too bad i know i didn't talk in this particular case all of this code is going to be available on github so you can check it out and give it a crack yourself this is running on a linux machine but uh thanks for tuning in guys i'll catch you in the next one huh, peace let me know that whether or not you like me not talking as well and doing some of the voiceover fingers crossed you do i'll catch you later peace Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, hit subscribe and tick that bell. And let me know what you thought of this video. Obviously, there's a ton of applications for this type of technology. And hopefully you've seen a little bit of how to actually go and apply object detection to a pre-annotated use case. Important to know the difference between Pascal VOC and YOLO annotations. And that conversion code could actually be used in quite a varied number of use cases. All you'd really have to do is change the labels. But hopefully you've enjoyed this. I will catch you in the next one. Peace.